Interestingly enough, because of logical equivalencies, let's go ahead and collect what we know. So we have some new facts, right? We have n squared even, then n even. We've also proved n even, then n squared even. We've proved n odd implies n squared odd. What else have we proved as a contraposition? Since we proved this, right? What's its contrapositive? Yep. Isn't that nice? We've got these four little facts. If the side of a square is odd, the area is odd. If the area is odd, the side of the square is odd. Nice little collections of facts. Might, need, might not be important enough to give it a name. I was thinking about important names. We're going to learn things like, you've had algebra. You know, you've, you know what the fundamental theorem of algebra is, right? What are the fundamental theorems of calculus? So not only are they a theorem, something that's true, and can be shown to be true, they're so important, they use the word fundamental. And we're going to do the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. What's the fundamental theorem of algebra? If you solve a polynomial of degree 5, how many solutions will it have across the complex numbers? 5, right? The fundamental theorem says that if whatever the degree is, that's how many solutions you got for the complex numbers. It might all be reals. You can do all the rationals and all the possible. Right? What's the fundamental theorem of calculus? What does it tie together? Area finding with anti-differentiation, right? that the derivative and the antiderivative and the indefinite and definite integral have the same symbols knowing that that theorem exists. How do you calculate an area? I find the antiderivative and I evaluate that at the right, I evaluate it at the left, that's going to be the area, right? So you have these fundamental theorems that are going to be important. All right, um, let's move on to prove square root of 2 is irrational. All right, this is one where all they've stated is the conclusion. OK, <laughs> here's the hard part. Show something. All right, we have some words here. I see ear. Ear means what? Not. It's not rational. All right, fine. What's rational mean? So we need a whole lot of enthymemes that are coming to play. If you tell me it's not rational, I better know what rational means. So uh, some background definitions. If x is rational, means that x is equal to an a over b, where three things are true. a and b are integers. a, b have no common factors and b is not 0. The book um, leaves off on the definition no common factors and then they write the definition common factors on the very next page. So that at one point they say definition and they leave off the no common factors but then in use they immediately say no common factors. First off, why do we say no common factors? We say no common factors because of this. If I allow common factors, 1 half, we've had 0, there's 1 half, right? 0.5. How many places does 1 half exist? One spot. If I allow common factors, how many ways could I write 1 half? As many as I want. Infinite number, non ending. I don't like an infinite numbers of representation of one object. So by saying no common factors, those immediately go away. They don't even exist, those are not rational. There's only one way to write irrational. Int over int in simplest form, done. Unique. There's only one way to write one half, period. Uniqueness is nice. Non-uniqueness is a pain. So that's what it's doing, right? OK, what would it mean to be not rational? It'd be not that? That's kind of hard to work with. So wait, you're telling me that if I want to prove square root 2 is irrational, that given what, what, what does square root mean? 
Everybody know? What's the square root of 4? Just 2. Right? Please do not say negative 2. Right, square root only returns one solution. It asks for the principal number times itself that returns the number on the inside. Boy, that's a pretty complicated thing. So you're asking me for a, a number times itself becoming 2. That number could never be written as an int over an int in simplest form with the bottom never 0. That does not exist. So you're asking me to show that something does not exist. That's kind of difficult to work with. So a direct proof here does not work. So what we're rather going to try to do is we're going to use a different technique. Contrapositive also doesn't work. Because what would be contrapositive? Contrapositive says that if the square root of 2 is rational, <coughs> then, well, wait a second. All the stuff that was the hypothesis was things like the definition of rationality, <laughs> the definition of irrational. I can't not that. That's too complicated. So I can't even not the hypothesis, those enthymemes. Not that. I don't, that's, that's too hard for me to do. Something's broken in my fundamental building blocks of math. I can't do that. So what we're going to rather use is the following. I want my conclusion, right, which is the hypothesis implies conclusion to be true. It's too hard. Makes your brain hurt. So let's don't. What would be not that? That must be false. So your conjecture. I want to show my conjecture is true. That's too hard for me to do. Well, really, it means that not your conjecture is supposed to be always false. But what's not an implication? Not an implication is really I have the hypothesis and I do not have the conclusion must be false. If you can show this, show this, then you have proved the conjecture. This is called a proof by, what's a word for always false? Contradiction. Contradiction. What's a proof by contradiction? You have the hypothesis and you do not have the conclusion. Is that a valid form of reasoning? What are we supposed to affirm? The hypothesis, what are we allowed to deny? The conclusion. So this is valid. We're allowed to do this. We can deny the conclusion without causing any sorts of problems. So it says, you have the hypothesis and you don't have the conclusion. And then somehow this ends up being false. So it's kind of turning your technique on its head. I want to deal with an always true. That's hard. OK, its opposite is always false. Well, maybe that'll work. OK, let's, what would be the opposite? So we're going to go through here. And we are going to assume the opposite of the conclusion. So I'm going to assume that square root of 2 is not irrational. What does that mean? It's rational. It's rational. So square root of 2 is rational. But what does that mean? That means square root of 2 is what? a over b. And what are the three things that happen? A, B are ints. B is not 0. And very important, what? A, B have no common factors. I want to show that given that you have this, somewhere this becomes always false. How? All right. What happens is these are things that I have, right? All right, let's kind of play around with it. Uh, I don't like square root. How do you get rid of a square root? Square both sides. So I get 2 is equal to a squared over b squared. I'm allowed to do that. I don't like fractions. Can I get rid of the fact fraction? Sure. 2b squared is equal to a squared. Nice, interesting feature. 
Why could I do this? When can you multiply both sides by something? As long as it is what? Not zero. Is b zero? No. Does that mean b squared is not zero? Yep, b squared is not zero. Therefore, I can multiply both sides by b squared. I'm allowed to do this only because of hymns. I had to use that. All right, a and b are ints. If a and b are ints, b squared is a what? What's n times n, right? So what do I have? a squared on this left-hand side. I have twice an integer. Well, if the left-hand side, what's twice an n? It's even, right? But if the left is even and it's equal to something, what must it be? Even, right? So I look at this and say, wait a second. That's twice an int. Hey, so 2b squared is even. But that implies that a squared is even even. Anybody remember one of my facts from up above? If a squared is even, what's a? Even. Remember these facts up here? If you have a square and it's even, the side must be even. And so that implies a is even. Now, what did I use? I used this. I used something I proved in a more important proof. So I probably shouldn't call this a fact. I should probably call it a lemma. It's more important now. It's no longer just a fact. It's a lemma. Why do I call it a lemma? It's, more, it's important enough to be used later. Let's call it a lemma. So I proved a lemma by the above lemma. All right? Who cares? All right, fine. If A is even, what does that mean? It's twice some int. All right, so OK, A is even. So that means that A is equal to 2K for some integer K. Kind of look at this and say, oh, whoa, what's going on? All right, I'm trying to simplify my problem a little bit, right? I'm trying to get rid of things that look complicated. So I just did through this process. But if that's true, if a is 2k, that means wherever I see a in an equality, well, I don't know. How about him? I can get rid of it and replace it with what? 2k. So that implies our 2b squared equals a squared becomes 2b squared equals 2k, the quantity, squared. Is everybody OK with that? Just replace things with their equal. All right, we can do some algebra. 2b squared is equal to 4k squared. I can divide by 2 because it's not 0. Multiply by a half because it's not 0. That becomes b squared is equal to 2k squared. Time out. What's k? It's an int. What's k squared? An int. So what does it mean 2k squared is? Even. even. But if 2k squared is even and it's equal to b squared, b squared has to be even. So b squared is even. And again, by lemma, what do I know about b? b is even. OK. This is a whole lot of replacement. But what's happened to my problem? What's happened to my problem is this. If the square root of 2 is equal to a over b, that's actually true. A and B are ints. B is not 0. Here's our third thing. They have no common factors. That's true. Not only that, by a little bit of algebra and rules of inference, I've learned that A must be an even number. And B must be an even number. Do you see a problem? They have a common factor of 2. So what's, what, what happens? Square root of 2 equals A over B is so special that A and B have no common factors and a common factor of 2. That's always what? False. So hence, A, B have no common factor 
and AB have a common factor of 2, which together is always false. <coughs> so if the opposite of my statement is simply contradiction, my statement must have been a what? A tautology. Right? Always true. So that's what happens, right? Hence, square root of 2 is irrational, must be a tautology, and we're done.